Hi, my name's Mel and I work for the International Travel College. This is a YouTube tutorial for Unit 23758, which is about communicating and customer service in the workplace. There's two parts to this assessment. The first part is about talking and communicating, and the second part is about the customer service side of things, something that's very important in the service industry. Just a couple of things, and you can refer back to the induction video in order for your full instructions. But when completing this workbook, please make sure that you do fill in those assessment pages in full. So that each assessment page needs to be completed. And that's with the section here required with your information of your work placement and, of course, some dates and a signature. Now, the most important thing is using blue and black pen and completing every single answer the best of your ability. Please don't be concerned if you don't get anything correct or don't get things correct because we do have resets available for our students if they don't quite get there. We will supply supporting information for those who do need that. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the part A of this assessment. So the very first thing that we discuss in part A is understanding communication as a whole. There's certain components in communicating. But what's very important is that there's two separate sides. There's verbal, everything we say, and then there's non-verbal, everything that's not said but may be done through body language. The first thing that we talk about is all the stuff that's said, verbal communication. We discuss each individual component. So that's everything from listening, grammar, using your voice, tone, everything. And then the first question that you come to in your assessment is simply asking you to explain four different components of verbal communication. You need to just write what it does to help you. So what I'm asking you to do is what does questioning skills do to help you when you communicate? What does listening skills do? What does the use of grammar do? when communicating with your customer, and so on. And the last one, using your voice. So that might be using your voice across the room, making sure that it has some sort of modulation, projection, of course, and clarity. So how clear? So why is that important? The next thing we talk about is everything not said, all the non-verbal stuff. So everything from your body language to your eye contact, the way you position your body, the way your arms are, your legs might be, and eye contact even. So in the next task, in task two, we simply ask the same thing, but this time the three components of nonverbal communication. So the question's asking you, what is important? Why is it important to use body language when communicating with your customer? Why is it important for eye contact? Now, what you need to know is that there are some very important bits of information in your workbook prior to these questions. And simply in italics, you need to read those sections very carefully on page previous to the task, because each page explains exactly what you need to know. Of course, when communicating, we can learn about all the stuff that's said, all the stuff that's not said, and we can do a really good job at it. But sometimes there's things that get in the way, and that's called barriers. So a barrier is something that gets in the way of you talking to somebody else. Working in the service industry, those barriers exist, and there's a lot of them. So some of the barriers could be age. Are they either quite elderly? So maybe they think that you don't know as much as you do know. Or are they really young? And maybe they don't know as much as they think they know. Is it a personal barrier? Do you have a headache? Is it hot? Maybe you might be tired. It's been long days. It could be something like that. Or educational. You don't quite have the same skill as everyone else. And it can be troublesome. Do you have an organisational barrier? Sometimes when you're maybe the new kid on the block or a new staff member, some people may even take advantage of that. Do they leave you alone and suddenly you have to do it all yourself? Physical differences is a very common barrier. 
physical differences will be like the noise. Now, in the service industry, there is noise everywhere. Phones ringing, people preparing stuff, people moving very quickly and making noise and clattering about. It could be even a family come to stay. Then they've got eight children and there might be a lot of noise in the background and kids playing and laughing, which is wonderful. But if you're trying to hear your customer, really hard to do so. Not listening actively is a barrier and that's where you don't quite listen fully. You may be just listening to bits and pieces and you might miss some important information. The cultural differences between you and another person may also become a barrier. And the only reason for that is because some cultures are very different. And an example is a Japanese culture and a German culture. The Japanese culture find that less is said is more important. Body language is really important. German cultures prefer more direct communication and professional, very, very professional uh, way of communicating. They don't like talking about emotional stuff in business and certainly straight to the point. You would never be late. You would always be on time. And so there are certain characteristics that certain cultures have different from others. And it can create a barrier if you don't understand it. Task three, this is now learning all of those barriers do exist. So what we've done is we've actually given you scenarios. So in those scenarios, and there's three of them, you need to read them carefully and pick out what barriers from the list you're provided exist. And all we want you to do is simply write why it is a barrier. Why is it a barrier? What is it going to do? So I guess the question is, what's the impact? An example is the first scenario. You work as a travel agent and airfares to Europe have just gone on sale. You have been busy all day in the customer inquiries and you haven't had a time to take a break. So by not taking a break all day, I think might be a barrier. All you'd need to do is simply reflect back on those pages previous and work out what you think that belongs to. Simply give the label to the barrier and write what can happen. Why is it a barrier? That information is given to you as well on those previous pages. Please read the scenarios and maybe even underline when you think you get to a barrier. And write down those barriers. The lists are available above. If you've used maybe cultural barrier in one scenario, you can actually use it in another one as well. You just can't repeat the same barrier within the same scenario. So after you've finished your three scenarios, the next thing that we're going to cover off is customer service, the welcome. First impressions last, and they're very, very important. Your customers are everywhere, and they will be watching, they will be listening, and most importantly, they will be giving feedback on their service, which can either affect negatively or positively for a company. Just be very warned that if a customer has a bad experience, on average, they're likely to tell roughly seven other people. That's bad word of mouth. If you have a very good experience, again, they may tell people it's less likely to tell that many, but it's free advertising and word of mouth advertising is some of the best advertising a company can get. So it's all in the service. You have to think about if you do a really good job, you benefit as much as they do as the customer and the company. So we talk about some components, so each area of customer service. The type of components we're talking about are things that help you provide excellent customer service. Your body language. Are you open to accepting customers and positive with your back straight, your head up? Are you making eye contact? Positively professional and showing that you would like to serve the customer. Mirroring. Now this is where, like for example, you were looking in a mirror and if you were to go like this, so would your reflection in the mirror. You can do that with your customer. So your customer may smile and nod and then you smile and nod back. That is called mirroring and what that does is builds a relationship between you and the customer. Understanding customer's needs. So that's about finding out a little bit more about who you're serving. Because if you know who they are, you know how to serve them. 
The next thing is meeting customers' expectations. So show genuine interest. Do some problem solving. Now you understand what they need. Now you can go and find it. So it's about finding the solution, finding the answers, providing the service. Meeting customers' needs is actually delivering that service. So that's where you actually deliver the service. So how you deliver that service is not invading personal space, maybe greeting with a smile, even giving fast and efficient service, or simply delivering the correct service, which is an excellent way of providing customer service. Lastly, there are some scenarios here. So there's a few scenarios that we have at the very end in task four. So these scenarios have some positive customer service effects in them. Simply read the scenario and write two positive things that they're doing that's effective. So if she faces her client and speaks directly to them, is that a positive? So you write why that's positive. Where's her voice going and how is she communicating? And so on, so on. So there's three different scenarios there to read. Simply write your feedback on what you think they're doing well. So the next tutorial that we'll be doing, and it's a separate part, is 23758, and that's part B. So we continue on with customer service. So the very first thing in the customer service part is asking you to describe, or sorry, identify four components. So in your previous pages on page 59, we stated four different components of customer service. So you label each four. It could be mirroring. It could be body language. It could be meeting customers' needs, understanding customers' needs, meeting customers' expectations. Then whatever you've written in one to four at the top, you must explain one to four underneath. So if you put mirroring up in number one, you need to explain component one, mirroring, in there. Now you can use the information in the previous pages as mentioned before. The next task is asking you to explain two benefits of providing good customer service in the tourism industry. So two benefits of customer service. Think about what you think will happen if you bring in more customers. If you bring in more money, think what may happen to you personally if that happens as well. So just write what you think will happen, that's good, and why you think that might be. The next task in task three of part B is asking you to read the scenarios. You need to read them carefully and write if you think it's good or bad customer service. Simply write why. Now, you can just write the reason or the example of why you think not from the actual scenario itself. That might be easier to explain for you than why it's good or why it's bad. After you've completed each of those scenarios, and there is a total of six scenarios to complete, you then need to think of task four. Now, you've already answered what good customer service will do to a company. On task four, now you need to turn that around and think about the bad. If you provide bad customer service, what do you think will happen to the customer or to you? What do you think is going to happen to the company if you provide bad service? So you only need two points for there. The last task in this assessment is simply service strategies. How to assist people in need. So on page 72, we discuss three separate types of customers. We discuss the elderly customer, who might be slight hard of hearing, the customer who's quiet and shy, and then the customer who does not speak English very well. We have outlined three separate points in how to assist each of those customers if they were to come into the actual company you work for. And the last task that is expected of you in this assessment in task five is simply writing how you can assist those types of customers. Yes, you can use the information on the previous page. I once again want to remind you about getting that workbook signed. You'll see that it's lined here in yellow, 
It's very hard to miss, but please ask your supervisor to sign your workbook. Don't be afraid. They're aware they need to sign it, and you simply need to ask, can you please sign my gateway workbook? Now, because this unit was the last unit of your gateway workbook, I just want to remind all students, please, to check page three for your instructions. You do need to just check that you've completed each task. You also need to check, please, that you have all signed off before you leave your workplace and then hand it to your gateway coordinator for the next steps. So I wish you all the best. Now, don't forget, there is additional support available to you. You can email gateway at itc.co.nz or you can watch your YouTube tutorial again if you wish, if you can't get any answers through your email and it's not enough. And of course, if all else fails, please make sure you check our Facebook group and ask some questions in there. It is a closed group and we are there to help and support you along the way of completing this workbook. Wishing you all the best for your work placement. We hope it all goes well and definitely hope you get something good out of it. Thank you very much.